So we know we've got these behavioral biases. We know we like to create bubbles. We have these, these powers that be, that are influencing, that are framing our decision making, whether it's the media or the government or Wall Street. So we essentially are in a world of chaos. But this chaos gives us something we can, that's useful. Useful if our objective is to make money. If the objective is to make trading decisions where you can buy and sell and end up with money. And from my perspective, as someone that's written two books on the subject of trend following, that's ultimately where I think there's some real, some real lessons that can be had. And trending behavior would be essentially what we had in 2008. We had these, these divergences from the mean. It's kind of dis disequilibrium. No mean reverting behavior. The kind, of, the kind of things that they really don't teach in school. Because as far as I know, in most academic programs, the universities across the world, the traders that I write about, the performance that they have, it's not supposed to exist because the world's efficient. Not supposed to have trends that you can make money from. But over the last decade, I, I'm just looking at performance after performance, decade after decade of trend following performance where people are making exceptional returns. And I bring up long term capital management, not because it hasn't been brought up, it's been brought up a ton over the last 10 years, but I bring it up for their return streams. At this conference, I've heard Madoff's name mentioned a few times. And someone asked a question, how could you spot the next Madoff? And to some degree, the answer was about uh, due diligence, and uh, uh, there was a triangulation of, of regulation and, uh, and being able to, to look in behind the scenes. And to me, no. It's real simple. If you were a Bernard Madoff investor, and you were making a percent or a percent and a half every month. And you ignored the fact that you were making a percent or a percent and a half every month. And you just took that money. And you thought everything was great. Well, how much homework had you done? No one makes a percent or a percent and a half every month. No drawdown. Unless it's a scam or unless it's like long-term capital. And it was a bad strategy destined to blow up. No one makes a percent every month. It's impossible. And I think history shows that. I, so, so I look at the examples of LTCM. I look at Madoff. And I think everyone in this room probably remembers the name Victor Niederhofer. I mean, Niederhofer made that percent or two every month. He was one of the top performing hedge funds. Boom. Blew up. It's because a lot of these traders, and I'm not talking about Madoff now, but they, they all believe in this mean, you know, reverting type tendencies that they can make money off. And at the end of the day, 2008 happens. And that whole strategy goes out the window. So these are some of the examples that, that I see. You know, we, we, we get focused on 2008 like it was something special. To me, it's not special. It's just human behavior in action, like other instances that we've seen in history. I mean, there's nothing special about 2008. It was a bubble. There's going to be another one. Do I really think we can sit down and figure out the fundamental reasons exactly why we had these bubbles in 2008? I'm sure there's going to be quite a few more accomplished academics and university people that will take an attempt at it. But how useful is it going to be? At the end of the day, we're all trying to make money. That's the objective. 